Hi everyone, Mary here, and this time we're going to talk about objects that are thrown up and fall back down. Now, as we were talking about acceleration of gravity, remember gravity is not smart. It doesn't turn on, it doesn't turn off, and it really doesn't care what other motion an object is in the middle of making. So when we throw an object down or throw it up or down or throw it at an arc, which we're going to get into in the next chapter, um, we can always assume acceleration of gravity is going to be the same if we can ignore air resistance. So let's analyze the motion of an object that is thrown straight up and falls down. Now I'm drawing it in an arc like this so that I've got some room to write, but we're talking about an object that's basically thrown up and then it falls back down. So I'm just spreading it out a little bit so that we can analyze the motion at all these different points along the path. So you've got an object and it has some sort of original velocity. Now if you've got motion up and down, you definitely have to call one positive and one negative. So I'm going to call all the motion up positive and anything that occurs in the downward direction I'm going to call negative. If all motion is in one direction, you don't have to have a positive and a negative, but if you've got things going in opposite directions, this is how we deal with the vectorness of the situation, is by making those positive and negative signs. So I throw an object into the air, and as it goes higher and higher and higher, what happens to the velocity? Does that velocity get uh, lower, or does it get faster? Well, yeah, it is going to get a little bit lower, and I am going to indicate that by a slightly shorter velocity vector. Now at the tippy tippy top of a path, try this, throw, toss something in like your pen in the air and toss it back down. At the tippy tippy top of the path, what's the velocity at the top? Zero. It has to go to zero before it can turn around and come back down again. Now the neat thing about gravity, if we can ignore air resistance, and for most of our problems, unless you're told otherwise, we are going to ignore air resistance, um, then the two halves of the path, the upward half and the downward half, are symmetrical. Everything is the same. So what that means is if I threw the object up with an original velocity VO, when it hits the ground or comes back to my hand, it's going to have exactly the same final velocity, but in the opposite direction. And I am going to put two little equivalence marks on these velocity vectors to indicate that the upward and the downward velocity are the same. If I choose any point in the path that are exactly the same height or altitude from the place of launch, then the velocity here is again going to be exactly the same as the velocity across the way at its same height on the way up. So with the same value, this is going to be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive, that will be negative. And at the tippy top, the velocity is zero. One more thing I want you to keep in mind as we go through this, and that is, remember, gravity is not smart. The acceleration of gravity is 9.80 meters per second squared down, or in the negative direction, continuously throughout this up and down path, and that's what actually causes this up and down path. All right, we're going to use this idea, and we are going to go over and do a example problem, I think. I said end slideshow. It's there we go. Okay, let's go do an example problem, and here's what we've got. A ball is thrown vertically upward. A little bit later, it returns to the same point of release. The ball is in the air for a total time of 8 seconds. What was the ball's initial velocity? So here goes. I throw a ball up, up it goes, it comes back, and if it goes to the same height, here's what we know. The initial velocity upward is going to be equivalent to exactly the same as the final velocity before it hits. This one's positive, this one's negative. So I'm going to call 
all the upward motion positive, all of the downward motion negative. What was the velocity at the tippy tippy top of the path? Yeah, velocity at the top is zero. And because of the fact that this journey is symmetrical, the going up part and the coming back down part, what that means is if the total time is eight seconds, it's four seconds to the top, and it's an additional four seconds to fall from the top down. So I want to know what was the ball's initial velocity. So let's write down some variables and see what's going to happen. I am going to personally, I'm going to look at only one half of the journey, because I think this is going to make it a little easier to solve. I'm going to say my original velocity is my unknown. I don't know what it is. And my velocity at the top, I'm going to call that my final velocity, and that's zero, because this ball is constantly going slower and slower till it gets to that top. Time for this to occur is four seconds, and the acceleration of gravity in this situation is downward towards the middle of the Earth, and that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, my friends, look at your collection of equations, and what equation do you think we're going to use? Now, when I look at that collection of equations, I am tempted to use one of my favorites, simple one. Final velocity is original plus acceleration times time. I'm solving for VO, so I am going to subtract acceleration times time from both sides. That's going to cancel. And so original velocity is going to be equal to final minus acceleration times time. And so here it goes. Final velocity at the top, because I'm only using half the path, is zero, minus my acceleration of gravity. In this case, it slows things down. So it's a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And all this occurred in four seconds. So when I pick up my calculator, the negative signs canceled, I'm going to end up with a positive 9.8 times 4, and that gives me 39.2 meters per second. It's going to be my original velocity upward. Now the second part of the problem says this. It says, to what height did the ball rise? Well, to answer this question, there's a couple different ways about it. I am going to use, again, only one half of the journey. I'm going to go from here to the tippy top because I'm interested in the displacement x. If I use the whole journey, if I use the whole path, here's what's going to happen. I take the ball, I throw it up, do, 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 do. it comes back down, do, 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 do. and if I do that, what's my displacement from here to there? Well, it's actually going to be zero because it's going to start and end at the same place. So in order for me to find the displacement, I'm going to use half the path. And just for giggles, this time I am going to use the second half of the path from the top down. So let's take a look at this. My quest is to find x, the displacement. I'm going to say at the top, the original velocity was zero, because at the top of that path it was. The final velocity, be when it hit, is a negative 39.2 meters per second. Gravity is in the negative direction, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I am looking for x. So what am I going to find? What equation am I going to use for x? I am actually going to use vf squared equals vo squared plus 2ax. And when I rearrange this and solve for x, I'm going to end up with x equals vf squared minus vo squared divided by 2a. And so x is going to be final velocity negative 39.2 meters per second, and then this is squared, minus original velocity, which is 0, divided by 2 times a negative, 
9.8 meters per second squared. Now in this case, this negative sign is actually attached to the 39.2. It's not part of the equation. So that negative sign is within that square. And I'm going to erase to give myself just a little wiggle room here. And then we'll complete this problem. So 39.2 squared divided by a negative 9.8 times 2. I'm going to end up with an answer that is negative 78.4 meters. Now what the heck do I have a negative sign on my displacement for? That's because I use the second half of the journey and I went from here down and that negative 78.4 is an indicator that my object during that portion of the path was going in the downward direction. Alright, we'll see you next time for one that's a little bit more complicated.